What's up, y'all? This is Sin Q. Almost a hundred years ago, Marcus Garvey wrote these words. They are from his book, The Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, or Africa for the Africans. Part 1, An Appeal to the Soul of White America. Written October 2nd, 1923. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Matthew verse 9. Surely the soul of liberal, philanthropic, liberty-loving white America is not dead. It is true that the glamour of materialism has, to a great degree, destroyed the innocence and purity of the national conscience, but still beyond our politics, beyond our soulless industrialism, there is a deep feeling of human sympathy that touches the soul of white America upon which the unfortunate and sorrowful can always depend for sympathy, help, and action. It is to this feeling that I appeal for 400 million Negroes of the world and 15 millions of America in particular. There is to no real white man in America who does not desire Let me read that again. There is no real white man in America who does not desire a solution of the Negro problem. Each thoughtful citizen has probably his own idea of how the vexed question of races which be settled. To some, the Negro could be gotten rid of by wholesale butchery, by lynching, by economic starvation, by return to slavery and legalized oppression, while others would have the problem solved by seeing the race all herded together and kept somewhere among themselves. But a few, those in whom they have an interest, should be allowed to live around as the wards of a mistaken philanthropy. Yet none so generous as to desire to see the Negro elevated to a standard of real progress and prosperity welded into a homogeneous whole creating of themselves a mighty nation which proper systems of government with proper systems of government civilization and culture to mark them admissible to the fraternities of nations and races without any disadvantage i do not desire to offend the finer feelings and sensibilities of those white friends of the race who really believe that they are kind and considerate to us as a people but i feel it my duty to make a real appeal to conscience and not to belief conscience is solid convicting and permanently demonstrative belief is only a matter of opinion changeable by superior reasoning once the belief was that it was fit and proper to hold the Negro as a slave, and in this the bishop, priest, and layman agreed. Later on, they changed the belief or opinion, but at all times the conscience of certain people dictated to them that it was wrong and inhuman to hold human beings as slaves. It is to such a conscience in white America that I am addressing myself. Negroes are human beings. The peculiar and strange opinions of writers, ethnologists, philosophers, scientists, and anthropologists notwithstanding. They have feelings, souls, passions, ambitions, desires, just as other men, hence they must be considered. Has white America really considered the Negro in the light of permanent human progress? The answer is no. Men and women of the white race, do you know what is going to happen if you do not think and act now? One of two things, you're either going to deceive and keep the Negro in your midst until you have perfectly completed your wonderful American civilization with its progress of art, science, industry, and politics, and then jealous of your own success and achievements in those directions, and with the greater jealousy of seeing your race pure and unmixed, cast him off to die in the whirlpool of economic starvation, thus getting rid of another race that was not intelligent enough to live, or you simply mean by the largeness of your hearts 
to assimilate 15 million Negroes into the social fraternity of an American race that will neither be white nor black. Don't be alarmed. We must prevent both consequences. No real race loving white man wants to destroy the purity of his race. No real Negro conscious of himself wants to die. Hence, there is room for an understanding and an, adjust and an adjustment. And that is just what we see. Let white and black stop deceiving themselves. Let the white race stop thinking that all black men are dogs and not to be considered as human beings. Let foolish Negro agitators and so-called reformers encouraged by deceptive or unthinking white associates stop preaching and advocating the doctrine of social equality. That's in quotes, social uh, equality, quote unquote, <clears throat> meaning thereby the social intermingling of both races, intermarriages and general social co-relationship. The two extremes will get us nowhere other than breeding hate and encouraging discord, which will eventually end disastrously to the weaker race. Some Negroes in the quest of position and honor have been admitted to the full enjoyment of their constitutional rights. Thus, we have some of our men filling high and responsible government positions. Others on their own account have established themselves in the professions, commerce and industry. Thus, the casual onlooker and even the men themselves will say carries a guarantee and hope of social equality and permanent racial progress. But this is the mistake. There is no progress of the Negro in America that is permanent. So long as we have with us the monster evil prejudice. And so at that time, I'm, I'm suspecting that uh, this was a time before the invention of the word racism. Uh, and just so you know that um, I, I suspect that at that time, victims of racism, white supremacy, such as uh, Marcus Garvey, weren't, uh, were, were confused about what racism, white supremacy is and how it works. And um, even now, huge numbers of us are. Uh, I, I still am, but I suspect that Based on my research, I know, I know a little bit more than most. But the actual word of pre prejudice, everyone, you know, prejudice is a natural uh, way of being. It's not actually the same thing as racism. Although you have to be prejudiced in order to a, a person that a racist white supremacist in order for them to use racism they do have to be prejudiced. They do have to uh, apply it in in that in that instance. But you prejudice can be used in so many different things. You can, if you if you choose uh, or 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 believe that you would rather stay, if you choose to stay in a house rather than an apartment, if you refuse to stay in an apartment and you want to stay in a house, you are prejudiced against apartments. If you would much rather drive a pickup truck than a car, you are prejudiced against cars. If if you decide that you want your mate to be a male over a female, you are prejudiced against females. So you do have to use prejudice to be a racist. But not all people who use prejudice or who are prejudiced are racist. So um, I say from here on out, every time you hear me say the word prejudice or every time you hear me read the word prejudice from Marcus Garvey, just replace it with racism, white supremacy. Prejudice, racism, white supremacy, we shall always have between black and white. So long as the latter believes that the former is intruding upon their rights. So long as white laborers believe that black laborers are taking and holding their jobs. So long as white artisans believe that black artisans are performing the work that they should do. So long as white men and, white, and, and women believe that black men and women are filling the positions that they covet. 
so long as white political leaders and statesmen believe that black politicians and statesmen are seeking the same positions in the nation's government, so long as white men believe that black men want to associate with and marry white women, then we will ever have prejudice, racism, white supremacy, and not only prejudice, racism, white supremacy, but riots, lynchings, burnings, and God to tell what next will follow. It is this danger that drives me mad. It must be prevented. We cannot allow white and black to drift along unthinkingly towards this great gulf and danger that is nationally ahead of us. It is because of this that I speak and now call upon the soul of great white America to help. It is no use putting it off. The work must be done and it must be started now. Some people have misunderstood me. Some don't want to understand me, but I must explain myself for the good of the world and humanity. Those of the Negro race who preach social equality and who are working for an American race that will in complexion be neither white nor black have tried to misinterpret me to the white public and create prejudice against my work. The white public not stopping to analyze and question the motive behind criticisms and attacks aimed against new leaders and their movements condemn without even giving a chance to the criticized to be heard. Those of my own race who oppose me because I refuse to endorse their program of social arrogance and social equality gloat over the fact that by their misrepresentation and underhand methods, they were able to have me convicted and imprisoned for crime which they calculate will so discredit me as to destroy the movement that I represent in opposition to their program of a new American race. But we will not now consider the opposition to a program or a movement, but state the facts as they are and let deep souled white America pass its own judgment. In another 100 years, white America will have doubled its population. In another 200 years, it will have trebled itself. The keen student must realize that the centuries ahead will bring us an overcrowded country. Opportunities as the population grows larger will be fewer. The competition for bread between the people of their own class will become keener and so much more so will there be no room for two competitive races, the one strong and the other weak. To imagine Negroes as district attorneys, judges, senators, congressmen, assemblymen, aldermen, government clerks and officials, artisans and laborers at work while millions of white men starve is to have before you the bloody picture of wholesale mob violence that I fear and against which I am working. Let me repeat this part. To imagine Negroes of district attorneys, judges, senators, congressmen, assemblymen, aldermen, government clerks and officials, artisans and laborers at work while millions of white men starve is to have before you the bloody picture of wholesale mob violence that I fear and against which I am working. No preaching, no praying, no presidential edict will control the passion of hungry, unreasoning men of prejudice when the hour comes. It will not come, I pray, in our generation, but it is of the future that I think and for which I work. A generation of ambitious Negro men and women out from the best colleges, universities, and institutions capable of filling the highest and most position and best positions in the nation in industry, commerce, society, and politics. Can you keep them back? If you do so, they will agitate and throw your constitution in your faces. Can you stand before civilization and deny the truth of your constitution? What are you going to do then? You who are just will open the door of opportunity and say to all and sundry, enter in. End quote. That, that's in quotes. But ladies and gentlemen, what about the mob, that starving crowd of your own race? 
Will they stand by, suffer, and starve? And allow opposite competitive race to prosper in the midst of their distress? If you can conjure these things up in your mind, then you have the vision of the race problem of the future in America. There is but one solution, and that is to provide an outlet for Negro energy, ambition, and passion away from the attractions of white opportunity and surround the race with opportunities of its own. If this is not done, and if the foundation for same as not laid now, then the consequence will be sorrowful for the weaker race and disgraceful to our ideals of justice and shocking to our civilization. A Negro must have a country and a nation of his own. If you laugh at the idea, then you are selfish and wicked, for you and your children do not intend that the Negro shall de discommode you and yours. If you do not want him to have a country and a nation of his own, if you do not intend to give him equal opportunities in yours, then it is plain to see that you mean that he must die, even as the Indian, to make room for your generations. And back then they called Native Americans Indians. Okay. Uh, why should the Negro die? Has he not served America and the world? And this is reference to all of the soldiers, uh, black soldiers who served in the United States military, those who served in the Civil War, those who served as the Buffalo Soldiers, uh, those who served in World War II. Both my grandfathers served... Uh, the uh, United States in World War II. One was a Buffalo soldier. Well, one was in the regiment of Buffalo soldiers, which was uh, moved from the frontier to the uh, to West Point. Uh, he wasn't in it when it was out in the frontier. That's you know many many years older than him. That was like in the eighteen seven eighteen hundreds. But uh, when he became a part of the Buffalo soldier revenue. Re uh, 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 regiment it was in the 1940s and what he did was he taught the uh, white officers how to ride horses uh, at West Point the uh, my other grandfather served in World War II as a marine he was one of the first black marines Mumford Point Marine uh, I don't care anything about the first stuff I'm just saying this as as a you know as a fact but the regiment, uh, the the uh, he was a part of the Sixth Marines. I think I believe it was a uh, infantry or something. But uh, they they uh, uh, the black Marines were reserved to uh, handle supplies and ammunition on. I believe it was on the island of Okinawa, and during that time, the United States was losing the war. Uh, and, and and the Japanese were fighting them and pushing them back. They had to retreat and head back to the base, which is where the black soldiers were. And when the battle took place on the base and the black soldiers got involved, then uh, uh, they, they fought and pushed the battle, pushed the Japanese back and ended up winning that battle some information I saw on the History Channel. Anyway, that changed the tide of the war uh, and forced the uh, Japanese uh, emperor to surrender. Uh, my grandfather's, uh, uh, I guess, inf platoon, infantry unit, whatever you want to call it, they went to China and accepted the surrender of the Japanese emperor. Um, then we have my father, uh, who served in Vietnam. So these are examples of black males who served the United States that Garvey is speaking about. And then he says, he says, uh, has he not borne the burden of civilization in this Western world for 300 years? Oh, that's talking about slavery. The next thing he goes on, he has, has he not contributed of his best to America? And for you to, if you want to look at some of the things that black males have contributed to the United States, look up Lewis Latimer, Granville Woods, Elijah McCoy, 
Garrett Morgan and George Washington Carver, just, you know, a, a, a handful out of the uh, hundreds of black inventors uh, who contributed to the United States uh, that Garvey is speaking of. He says, uh, but there will not, he says, surely all this stands to his credit. But there will not be enough room, and the one answer is, find a place. We have found a place. It is Africa. And as black men for, for three centuries have helped white men build America, surely generous and grateful white men will help black men build Africa. And why shouldn't Africa and America travel down the ages as protectors of human rights and guardians of democracy? Why shouldn't black men help white men secure and establish universal peace? Universal peace is the ultimate objective of the United Independent Compensatory Code, by the way. It's to establish uh, a world where uh, uh, a world of justice, a system of justice where there no injustice exists, a world where uh, every single person is guaranteed not to be mistreated for any reason. This is what we call uh, uh, the people that that would exist at that time when this situation is established. We would call them universal man and universal woman. So, um, you know, more about that in the code. We can only have peace when we are just to all mankind. And for that peace and for the reign of universal love, I now appeal to the soul of white America. Let the Negroes have a government of their own. Don't encourage them to believe that they will become social equals and leaders of the whites in America without first on their own account proving to the world that they are capable of evolving a civilization of their own. I I uh I believe that it's it's beyond that now. It's too late for trying to establish a uh, a, a negro government or black government on its uh, of its own. I I mean it it shouldn't be anything that anyone should let someone do. OK, uh, but right now, at the time that we're in, we exist under the one world government of white supremacy. There is no other type of government that will exist. So and the white supremacists are not going to allow black people to have their own uh, government their own true government without the white supremacists meddling in the affairs. So the best solution is to replace the incorrect government of white supremacy with the correct government of justice. That means a government, once again, that guarantees that no person is mistreated for any reason. But he, he continues, don't don't encourage them to believe that they will become social equals and leaders of the whites in America without first on their own account, proving to the world that they are capable of evolving a civilization of their own. The white race can best help the Negro by telling him the truth and not by flattering him into believing that he is as good as any white man without first proving the racial national constructive metal of which he is made now mind you black males or black people in general we should definitely uh, be working to be uh, this this constructive metal uh, to, that Garvey is speaking of we must always work to 
to do every single thing that is constructive in solving our problems. And, and that, that too is definitely a part of the code. But the only one we should be proving, the only people or the only, as individuals, the only people we should, the only person we should be proving it to is ourselves. We don't need to prove it to white people at all. We need to prove it to ourselves <clears throat> as individuals. And whatever white people see it, if they if they uh, learn something from it or if they're impressed by it or whatever, so be it. But, you know, so I disagree on that. But stop flattering the Negro about social equality and tell him to go to work and build for himself. This this we must do. We must go to work and build for ourselves. Uh, I, I agree with that, although. It is because of the white supremacists that we are in and continue to be in the wretched condition that we are in. And therefore, we should always ask, uh, as Garvey is asking for help here, we should always ask uh, white people or actually more, more specific, the smart and powerful uh, 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 white people who practice racism we should ask them to stop practicing racism and help us by uh, helping us gain the things that we need in society to solve our problems. Um, but if that continues to fall on deaf ears, then we should work and build for ourselves at the same time that we keep asking. Help him in the direction of doing for himself and let him know that self-progress brings its own reward. I appeal to the considerate and thoughtful conscience of white America not to condemn the cry of the Universal Negro Improvement Association for a nation in Africa for Negroes, but to give us a chance to explain ourselves to the world. White America is too big and when informed and touched too liberal to turn down the cry of the awakened Negro for a place in the sun. Now, I, uh, I found it interesting that, uh, you know, this, this section, this part where he, where he said uh, to imagine Negroes as district attorneys, judges, senators, congressmen, assemblymen, aldermen, government clerks and officials, artisans and laborers at work while millions of white men starve is to have before you the bloody picture of wholesale mob violence that I fear and against which I am working. That right there, that's part paragraph right there reminds me so much of today and what's going on because Obama uh, fits in that in that part. You know, this other part where it says a generation of ambitious Negro men and women out from the best colleges, universities and institutions capable of filling the highest and best positions in the nation in industry, commerce, society and politics. That, you know, describes uh, to me what what is kind of current right now, because we, we I mean, we know that the majority of. Of the black collective is still struggling it's still uh, in hell it's still being victimized by racism white supremacy i mean even the black folks who are in these positions uh are still being victimized however they are now in those positions as opposed to not being in it, it, it to him it was just a vision okay none of this was going on you didn't have black people in all these positions back in 1923 but now you do how have, have them in those positions here in 2014 uh 20 excuse me 2016 and to top it off you also have millions of white men who are starving out there millions of white people who are starving out there who uh uh are rallying around I believe that the main reason why they're rallying rallying around Trump because he's hollering all this take back our country kind of crap and excuse me, you know, with Obama being president and then you seeing black folks in all these different positions, judges and everything. This is enough, I think, 
to to cause millions of uh, white men who starve, uh, uh, you know, to to cause this uh, this bloody picture of a whole of wholesale mob violence that he fears. And I have to say, I I suspect that this kind of thing is going to be coming along. OK, and so <clears throat> this is where. I, I have to say that I am glad that I am the co-founder of a security company because this helps me <clears throat> to to know that I have uh, uh, a way to take some kind of measures of protection and I suggest that many of you uh, who want to f take measures of protecting yourselves uh, that you give me a call or watch more of my videos because uh, especially under the section of, uh, of war, uh, eventually you you'll see some playlists that I have posted, uh, but uh, we'll, we will uh, be learning how to defend ourselves or be talking more about how to defend ourselves because um, this is this that there is an actual war going on. White supremacy is a war, and uh, we are the prisoners of that war. Non-white people, victims of racism, white supremacy, are the prisoners of that war, and. Um, we, we must take up the position, uh, like on a chessboard, when you see on a chessboard that the white pieces on the chessboard, white moves first. So white is the aggressor. That's offense. Uh, it's, it's offense, defense, right? And our position on the chessboard, which is black, we must be defense, offense. So we have to... We're, we come from the position of self-defense and must defend ourselves against any kind of attacks that come on. I saw a video today of some kind of clash here in California down in Anaheim between the Ku Klux Klan uh, and, and uh, some protesters. I mean, and it was violent. Some people got stabbed. Several people got injured. Several people got arrested. They don't know who started it. Both sides are claiming that the other side started it. But to me, that is a precursor of what's coming. Uh, later on today, I saw a clip of Donald Trump being asked on CNN by, I think his name is Jake Tapper or Tamper or Jake, something. I know his first name is Jake. He, uh, he asked Trump if he would deny the endorsement of David Duke, who used to be a Grand Dragon or Wizard or Potentate or Poobah or Grand whatever the hell of the Ku Klux Klan. And Trump said he never heard of David Duke, okay? So that, to me, I find that very hard to believe. But uh, Jake uh, 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 further tried to pin him down to the question by letting him know who David Duke was and what group he was with or whatever, and Trump kept avoiding the question. He never gave a solid answer to say that he denies the endorsement of uh, anyone who has basically an open racist white supremacist belief, okay? Now, my perspective on it, I don't care what a person believes. It's when they start taking action off their beliefs that I have a problem. So if, if you are a racist white supremacist, and you are using deception and violence against me because I am a non-white person 
then you are victimizing me as a racist white supremacist. I mean, a as a victim of racism. That's what you're doing to me. So my job is to keep figuring out how can I stop you from practicing your racism? How can, how can I match your deception with truth? How can I match your violence with counter violence to, 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 which is, which is self-defense to keep the, the, the racism from occurring? That's, that's what I would think I'm trying to do. And so by, tr by Trump, not denying it what he's doing is he's encouraging that sector of society that openly supports white supremacy although i've noticed that a lot of people in that movement a lot of clan members and stuff have have changed their belief system and mind you you got to understand too these are not the same clan members that were uh, lynching and, and killing us, at least as far as I know. At least they're not openly professing that they do like the clan used to do uh, back in the day. You know, when, when America, that period of time, I believe it was in the 1920s, around the time that Garvey was, they had... The, which is the highest membership of Ku Klux Klan on record was like 5 million. They had over 5 million members in the Ku Klux Klan in the 1920s. And back then, they were openly uh, killing us, openly saying they had no problem killing us. Open, they were doing all of that stuff. Okay? They were openly wanting white supremacy and openly saying that they wanted it, uh, you know, uh, maintaining it and and promoting it and refining it they were they were openly doing that at that time and the ones of today the, these guys like the, the ones that were saying all that back in the 20s a lot of them cats are dead a lot of those clan members some those ku cluckers are and nazis are dead now or so damn old that they don't even know how to tie their shoelaces anymore. Okay? So see now. So those ones had, had that mentality back then. But the current ones that you see, a lot of them, they're talking about being proud to be, having white pride and, 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 and wanting to separate and have their own uh, society. Or, uh, but... Uh, but at the same time, saying that they don't mind that uh, other uh, what they believe are races have the same thing. They, they don't they don't care about that. So in that instance, I don't have anything against a Ku Klucker or a Nazi who has that type of thinking in their mind. What I I, I only have something against the ones who believe that they should use deception and violence against non-white people to 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 uh get some kind of gain out of it i'm i'm totally against anyone that does that uh, but from from my perspective of this thing that happened, if 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 anybody out of the process protesters started this thing or provoked this thing, it was not just. It was not a just situation. It was not that they did not handle the situation properly, because what you've done now is you've opened the door for. Clan members to point out to other clan members the, the the racist white supremacists who who 
who see us as savages. And and have other negative or derogatory things to say about us will say, well, look, these guys, look, look right here, these niggers right here, because you know that's what they're gonna say. They're not they're not telling you them niggers weren't gonna go for it. They're not telling you them niggers were gonna attack you. Now, one of the biggest things that they that they talk about these days is violence coming from black folks, black folks attacking white people. And you just went on and, and made that thing a reality just because these guys are walking down the street, protesting, doing the same thing that you have a right to do. The same thing you got a right to do. So, so I'm simply saying that you know, and, and I personally believe that there must have been some kind of agent provocateurs up in there somewhere or just somebody who's just pure stupid. Because when you start uh, 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 doing those kind of things, you make this so-called reverse racism that they keep talking about look like it's real. You understand what I'm saying? When, when there's really no such thing as reverse racism. All, all these guys doing these guys that, that attacked the Ku Kluckers, they were <clears throat> reacting to racism, white supremacy. The whole uh, concept and, and, and idea behind the Klan and all of the things that the Klan has done in its past or people have done in the name of the Klan in the past is what's associated with those who call themselves clan members a day. If I were you guys, if I was a clan member uh, or a white person, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I would change the whole name of the goddamn organization. I wouldn't even bring the name of the clan up and use it again because it's done. It's, it's tampered with. It's, it's so tampered with. It's just like me when I was in the Nation of Islam and uh, everybody was trying to say that we were black supremacists and all this kind of stuff, uh, you know, when that was nothing of the sort. But because people were saying it in the media and everything, it stuck. Same thing with the Black Panthers. The, the, I'm not talking about the new Black Panther Party. I'm talking about the original Black Panther Party. If you do the research on the original Black Panther Party and see what they were about, or even do the research on what black power means and where it came from. It doesn't mean the same thing as black as as white power. And 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 uh, the the uh, Black Panthers, the original Black Panthers was not a. They didn't even promote the idea of black supremacy in no kind of way, shape, or form. Did they did they promote that idea? So, uh, but I, I'm saying this to say that. History has attached so many negatives to certain names or certain words that you you should you should become a part of another organization or make your own organization and leave the word clan out of it. You know, just just to uh, pro, uh, promote the idea that you are not down with the stuff that the Klan did centuries ago. You see what I'm saying? Because the Klan centuries ago, not all members of the Klan, of course, but there was a lot of members of the Ku Klux Klan who were actually terrorists. They were domestic terrorists, man. They were terrorizing our people. They were terrorizing non-white people and white people who supported non-white people in some kind of way, shape, or form for centuries. So... You know, but my point the, the the next thing is is that um, these these if now now if the clan members uh, anybody in the clan provoked the protest, then I have to say you you guys messed up because you have demonstrated that you are still associated with your old ways. 
um, you know, the last uh, violent clan attack that I remember that was recorded was, I believe, happened in, uh, what, 1980? Let me see here real quick. You know, that's the great thing about Google. It happened in Greensboro, North Carolina. If I do Klan Massacre, Clan Massacre in Greensboro, 1979. The Greensboro, the KKK Greensboro Massacre, 1979. You can you can look that up on YouTube, and you you will see that that was a situation that was totally initiated by the Klan. They killed, I think it was like six people, I, I believe. I know there's a a, a cemetery. In Greensboro, the same cemetery that my grandfather's buried in, the one who's the Marine, there's a tombstone there with all of their names on the tombstone. They, I, I believe they buried them all together. And these were white people who were killed. I think one of them might have been black, but I know the majority of them were white people. When they were having a protest in Greensboro and the Klan rode up on them and there was a shootout. And, and the whole thing is on YouTube. You can see the whole shootout on YouTube, okay? None of the protesters had any guns. They were, they were massacred. So then that if, if the Klan initiated the, the situation today, then I have to say, well, you guys are the same as usual, business as usual, and you haven't changed. And then that leads back to this same thing that Garvey was talking about, about the uh this wholesale mob violence that he fears <clears throat> so anyway that's it uh, this is sin q um i'll see you next time remember to subscribe to me to like my videos uh if 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 you I, i'm really trying to dedicate the rest of my existence towards studying racism white supremacy what it is and how it works um if you can help me do that by making a donation uh, i would greatly uh, uh, appreciate that if you hit the uh i believe it's the the google wallet button or support button that was a support button uh, right up here on the on the left top left corner of of the of my channel, uh, that would be that would be great. And and that's it. Uh, replace, please uh, help me uh, work uh, to replace racism, white supremacy with justice.